हेलो गाइस दिस इज टाइप टू प्रॉब्लम्स एंड वी कॉल इट एज ब्लॉक कनेक्टेड विद रोप प्रॉब्लम्स नाउ इन दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स यू कैन सी द बेसिक प्रॉब्लम व्हिच इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू इज द सिस्टम ऑफ टू ब्लॉक्स ए एंड बी व्हिच आर कनेक्टेड टू ईच अदर बाय अ रोप एंड अ फोर्स एफ इज बीइंग अप्लाइड ऑन ब्लॉक ए एंड एफ इज अ पुलिंग फोर्स so uh, the friction coefficients are given for two blocks and we have to find out the value of accelerations of block a b and the tension in the rope <coughs> and the friction uh, actual friction force which will act uh, from the ground on block a and b now for that first of all we have to write down the maximum values of friction uh, for both the blocks so f a max will be uh, 20 newtons and fb max will be <coughs> uh, 20 newtons okay now uh, both the maximum values of friction is 20 newton and uh, if that force f is uh, first case which we are taking is f is equal to 10 newtons <coughs> so if this f is equal to 10 newtons then uh, this friction f a max is capable of balancing 20 newtons so it it can easily balance 10 newtons and hence this f a will act <coughs> as 10 newton now uh, there uh, if this f is balanced by that uh, friction of block a alone therefore no <coughs> force or no pull will be transferred to the rope and therefore the tension in the rope will be zero and if rope is not pulling the block b uh, therefore the friction in uh, in block b will also be zero so ye, this is the <coughs> first case now if f is equal to 30 newtons so if f is equal to 30 newton then uh, this friction f a max <coughs> is only capable uh, to balance 20 newtons so it will act uh, to its maximum value so f a max will be equal to 20 newtons so if uh, out of 30 newtons 20 newton is being balanced by f a max then the tension in the rope <coughs> will be uh, <coughs> Uh, 30 minus 20, which is 10 newtons, and 10 newtons uh, force will be pulling the block B, and uh, the friction of block B is capable of balancing 20 newtons. Therefore, it can easily balance this 10 newton force, and hence the friction in block B will act as 10 newton only, and the tension in the rope will be 10 newton, and the accelerations of the blocks will be zero. Also, in the first case. <coughs> now uh in the next case the third case f is given as 50 newtons so we can easily see that both these frictions uh, combinedly add up to give 40 newton of force and the applied force is 50 newton so this system will move towards uh, right side and uh, the acceleration of a and b will be same because they are connected with a rope and the acceleration will be f minus f a max <coughs> plus f b max both the frictions will act towards left side and blocks will move towards right side under the effect of this force f and their accelerations will be same divided by 30 30 is the total mass of these two blocks so a a <coughs> and ab will be equal to 50 minus 40 by 30 which is 1 by 3 <coughs> meters per second square both the frictions <coughs> will be acting to their peak values which is also equal to 20 newtons fb max will also be equal to 20 newtons and also fb fb denotes the actual friction which is acting on the blocks and fb max denotes the maximum friction which is acting on this which can act this on these blocks 
Now we have calculated the acceleration of both the blocks and to calculate the tension, I'm writing the equation of block B that if T is acting on block B, then its equation will be T minus friction is 20 is equal to MA. <coughs> its mass is 10 and acceleration is 1 by 3. So T will be equal to 10 by 3 plus 20. So T will be equal to uh, 70 by 3 Newtons. This is the <coughs> value of tension in this case. Okay. Now we move on the next problem. <coughs> in this arrangement, we have to find out the tension a bit, uh, in the rope which is connecting blocks uh, B and C which, is, uh, which are having masses of 4 kg and 6 kg. So first of all, we have to determine uh, the fact that whether they will move or not. So for that, we have to check the maximum frictions which can act on these three blocks. So this friction F3 max can uh, be uh, 12 Newtons. This friction F2 max can be <coughs> uh, 8 Newtons and this friction F one max this is f1 max so it can be four newtons so combinedly if we uh, have to check that this system will move or not then we can uh, add up these frictions and on adding up these frictions we can say that 12 plus 8 plus 4 will be 24 and uh, 20 newton is being applied on the uh, system of these masses so this uh, system will not move at all now if this system is not uh, moving then what uh, is the actual values of friction which will be acting on these blocks so for uh, i'm starting from this block a this is a this is b this is c for block a if we apply a 20 newton force on block a and its maximum friction can balance only 4 newtons so it is not sufficient to balance 20 newtons therefore uh, it will act to its peak value and uh, the remaining 60 newton will be transferred to the rope so this tension t1 will be equal to 16 newtons now this 16 newton force is pulling block b and block B <coughs> has a maximum friction of 8 Newton so it can balance up to 8 Newtons and hence uh, it is not sufficient to balance 16 Newtons and therefore it uh, will the remaining 8 Newtons will be transferred to this tension T2 so T2 will be equal to 8 Newtons and uh, if this T2 is 8 Newton then the friction of 6 kg block can balance up to 12 newtons so it is sufficient enough to balance 8 newtons therefore it uh, is not required to act uh, to its peak value so f3 will act only 8 newtons and the tension uh, t2 in the rope will be 8 newtons so the correct option will be option number a thank you in this question a force which is time dependent f is equal to t is applied on this block a and it is pulling force and we have to find out the correct graph which will represent the relationship between friction acting on the block b and the time so we can easily predict that uh, let's suppose the maximum friction acting on this block will be f a and the maximum friction acting on this block which can act on this block is f b so so till uh, f is less than if f is less than f a then then uh, this friction will alone balance this f and tension in the rope will be zero and the friction acting on block b will be zero because as rope will not be pulling block b therefore there will be no requirement of friction uh, to stop the block b now now if f a so there uh, so we can predict that for a certain period of time till f is less than f a the friction force acting on block b will be zero 
so the graph c and d are absolutely wrong because they are starting from zero and friction will not start from zero in fact it will remain zero for a certain period of time till f applied force is less than the uh, friction of block a now if f uh, exceeds f a then the friction of b will start to act and the tension in the rope will be f minus f a <coughs> till uh, the system is not moving and this tension will be equal to f b till the system is not moving i am saying it again so uh, by substituting the value of f as a function of time so this will be the equation of friction so this is a uh, if we uh, analyze friction uh, on the y axis and time on the x axis so it is a straight line which is going up and it has a, a negative intercept and positive slope so the correct choice for that will be option number a now we move on the next problem in this video we have to find out uh, the value of f a f b and t where f a is the actual friction acting on block a f b is the actual friction acting on block b and t is the tension in the rope so first of all we need to write down the maximum friction which can act on these blocks so f a max will be a point 2 into 10 into g so it will be 20 newtons and f b max will be <clears throat> 0.1 into 20 into 10, which is also 20 newtons. Now uh, we have applied two forces. You can see this is 40 newton and this is 30 newton in opposite directions on the different blocks. So if you find out the net external force, then it would be uh, 10 newton towards uh, left side. and uh, if this system is uh, moving towards left side then both these frictions will act towards right side and the sum of these frictions will be 40 newton and therefore this 10 newton is not sufficient to prevent uh, uh, to um, pull these pull this system uh, towards left side so this system will not move this is the first conclusion that the acceleration of the system Uh, will be zero. A A will be zero and A B will be zero. These blocks will not move. Now we have to find out uh, the values of actual friction which is acting uh, on these blocks and tension in the rope. For that, we need to uh, find out the fact that which friction uh, between uh, which friction of block A or of block B is self-adjusting. or which friction is uh, acting to its peak value we have to find out this fact for this uh, for um, finding out this fact we are assuming that <coughs> first we are assuming that assume that we cannot predict that fa is acting to its peak value and fb is acting to uh, is a self adjusting force uh, actually it is acting Uh, less than its peak value we cannot predict that and to find out this fact we must assume that uh, first of all we are assuming that fa <coughs> is mag acting maximum fa is maximum and fb is uh, self adjusting self adjusting uh, means <coughs> it is acting less than its peak value so uh, if i am assuming that fa is acting maximum then i am drawing the fbd of block a so this is the block a it has a mass of 10 kg and this force is 40 newtons and this friction will be acting in the backward direction and fa max will be equal to <coughs> 20 newtons and this tension t will be the remaining force out of 40 so out of 40 the remaining force will be only 20 so this tension should be 20 newtons now <coughs> we know that uh, this uh, we have already written the conclusion that these blocks will not move 
so uh, this uh, block b will should also remain in the equilibrium condition so <coughs> the tension which is acting on this block b will be 20 newtons and this force f1 will be 30 newtons so remaining force uh, is the net force which will tend to move this block is only 10 newtons and this friction which can act on this block is 20 newtons so it can self adjust itself and it will act only <coughs> 10 newtons so this is the correct uh, case now if uh, we have assumed that assuming that f b is max maximum and f a is self adjusting if we are as assuming this <coughs> then we are drawing the free body diagram of block b so this is the block b and this force f1 is 30 newton acting on this block and friction will be acting in the reverse direction and this friction uh, will be balancing this 30 newton and it would be 20 newton so the remaining force of 10 newton will be balanced by tension and hence tension will be equal to 10 newtons now if i draw the free body diagram of block a so this is 10 kg <coughs> and uh, this tension force will be uh, 10 newtons t will be 10 newtons and this force f2 will be 40 newtons so you can see that there is an unbalanced force of 30 newton towards left side now uh, to balance this force friction uh, should act towards right side and the maximum friction which can act is 20 newton so uh, unbalanced force is 30 newton and friction can only balance 20 newtons so conceptually this 10 kg block block a should move towards left hand side but as we have already derived the conclusion that a a is zero and a b is zero so these blocks are not moving so this case is wrong so if if we have assumed uh, that fb is maximum and fa is self adjusting then it is not giving the correct <coughs> result hence uh, if uh, we have assumed this before the first case then we should know that uh, the second case in which fa is maximum will be correct and if we have already assumed the correct case before the wrong one so we sh we need not to go on the wrong one because uh, the correct case uh, will be the only one only correct case in these kind of problems so if uh, we have assumed this case before second case then we need not to go on the second case but if we have assumed second case before the first then we have to go on the first case after the second case okay now we move further on the next problem